All right, this is assignment one from the PA course. This is about slopes. Uh, slopes up that you're going to cover or you're going to encounter in lots of different exams, lots of different subjects. So um, topography, site stuff, plumbing and sewers, uh, code and ADA ramps, all these things have to do with different slopes. And so it's it's a good idea to have a good fundamental understanding of how slope math works. Uh, so in this assignment, we've got some general thought exercises like define slope or some building you know, site components that deal with slope. Um, you can read those in the answers. I'm just going to, in this video, cover uh, basically the math of all these. So you get five different slopes with sort of different information given. Some of them are percentages, some are a ratio, some are feet. Um, and then you're asked to solve for the missing part. So I'm going to go through one by one and how you would solve each of these slopes and sort of what the process is and what the information is. Since this is assignment one, I'm going to put this one on YouTube. So if you're watching this in the course, just look at your course uh, files. And if you're watching this on YouTube, check out the description for more information about what this is that I'm talking about. All right, so the first one, you're given a slope of 3 and 12. You're asked to find what's the slope percentage. And that's pretty easy. The slope is just rise over run. So rise is the vertical, run is the horizontal. It's not given to you in any unit, so it doesn't matter. That could be 3 inches or three feet, and that could be 12 inches or 12 feet. But if you see it like this, you can always just rewrite it as a ratio, three to 12, which is what you would normally see up on this diagonal part. So as a ratio, that just gets rewritten as three divided by 12 equals 0.25. That slope is 25%. So this next one's a little more tricky. Um, you're given the slope and you're given the run and you're asked to find the rise. And on the ARE, a lot of times a uh, question, even though it might be simple, they try to trick you with changing the unit. So in this case, you're given a run of 15 feet, but you're asked to find the rise in inches. And so that's a pretty typical kind of airy thing to do. You know, they'll give you the question in one unit and the answer is in a different unit. So just like we saw before, um, if we're solving for X, if we're solving for the question mark, we can rewrite that as X over 15 equals 5%, so equals 0 0.05. We, write, we rewrite that as X equals 0 0.05 times 15 and X equals 0.75 feet, and then you just convert feet to inches, so 0.75 feet is 9 inches. Um, if you think you might not remember to do that at the end, a lot of times I like to convert at the, sort of the earliest point possible, so I would rewrite it at the beginning as x inches over 15 feet, and then I would convert right away, so 15 feet times 12 inches uh, gets us 180 inches, and so then I get to rewrite that as x equals 0 0.05 times 180, my answer comes out to nine, so then I don't have to worry about converting at the end because I know that I did it in the beginning. Okay, the third one, you're given a rise of two feet. You have to figure out what is the run, and you're given uh, one to 12 slope, and so that's just a ratio, so that doesn't have any units. Uh, it doesn't matter. So we set this one up just the same. So two over X, right, our rise over run is equal to one over 12. So you just cross multiply and divide, so X, 1, 2, and 12, you get x equals 24, and since there's only feet here, the answer is in feet, and there's no units here, it's x equals 24. Maybe an easier way of looking at that is if this is our slope, and our question is 2 and x, and we're given 1 and 12, let's just put 1 here and put 12 here. So how do we get from... 1 to 2, we multiply by 2. So if we want to get from 12 to x, we multiply by 2. So 12 to x, or 12 times 2 is 24. All right, another way you could see the slope presented is in a value per 100 feet. So in this case, you've got a slope of 4 feet for every 100 feet. So uh, that means for every group of 100 feet you have, you go up or down 4 feet. So in this question, I've got a run of 33 feet, and you're asked to find the rise in inches. And so uh, the quickest way to set this one up is just figure out how many groups of 100 feet do you have. So 33 divided by 100 gives me 0.33 groups of 100 feet. Each of those groups, I move up 4 feet. So 0.33 multiplied by 4, you get 1.32 feet. Our answer is inches. So multiply by 12, and you get 15.84 inches. And I just rounded that up to 16 um, in the assignment. And on the exam, you'll be told always how to round, and I'm going to talk about that in more detail on the, on the last example. Another way to set this up, um, if this is confusing, you can always just change this to a ratio. So 4 feet in 100 feet 
is the same as saying one in 25. So if we rewrite that as uh, our run is 33 feet, our rise is unknown, and our slope is one in 25, then we can just set that up as we did before. So as our ratio x over 33 equals one over 25, you cross multiply and divide, and you end up with the same values, x equals 1.32 feet, which is 15.84 inches, and then you can round up to 16 inches. All right, and so the last example is probably the trickiest one. You're given a rise of one feet three inches. You gotta figure out what is the run, and you're given a slope of one eighth inch in 12 inches. And this one's always tricky because you want to think, oh, it's just, um, you know, one eighth divided by 12, but it's one eighth of an inch divided by 12. It's 0.125 inches. Uh, and so we'll get into that here. So the best way to set this one up, again, is a ratio. Um, this is one feet three inches over X equals one eighth of an inch over 12 inches. Uh, and, and let's rewrite that into just something more simple. You know, it's hard to do one foot three. So that becomes... 1.25 feet over x equals 0.125 over 12. When you're dealing with two things that are the same unit, it sort of doesn't matter. You can you can cross those out because the inches will cancel and it just becomes a ratio. So then again, we cross multiply and divide. We've got 0.125x equals 1.25 times 12. That works out to 120 feet. All right, the other way we could solve this is we could use the same percentage, the same sort of percent one that we did um, earlier, but this is uh, an area where you have to pay attention to rounding, right? Because one thing you might recognize is that one eighth of an inch over 12 is just about 1% slope. And that's good enough to know for, you know, a question that asks for what's the slope of a sewer and it happens to be 1%, you know, so an eighth of an inch in 12 is a 1% slope, but it's not exactly 1% slope. So if we did the math with, if we just rounded at the beginning and said, okay, that's 1% slope, then 1.25 over x at a 1% slope, x would work out to 125 feet. We know the answer, we proved the answer is 120, foot, is 120 feet, but if we round it early and just used 0 0.01, our answer would work out to 125 feet, which is five feet off. So if we were a little bit more accurate and we said, okay, one eighth of an inch is actually closer to 0 0.0104, and we do the math, x works out to 120.19, and that rounds easily to 120. And if we were really, really accurate and we said, okay, one eighth of an inch in 12 is actually 0 0.01041667, then X works out to 119.999962. And that obviously rounds to 120. So um, a lot of times people ask me, how do you round on the exam? And you will always, almost always be given how to round, um, you know, whether it's to the nearest foot or to the nearest inch or up or down. Um, but when I'm doing these problems, I don't round until the end. So if I was solving this problem, mathematically, I would type in this whole value here, this 0 0.01041666667, and end up with an answer like this, and then I would round, because uh, if you start rounding too early, you know, you can maybe get out of the tolerance on the exam, and I don't know what that is, I don't know if anyone does, but my personal method is to use the fullest sort of long decimals, even if they're annoying, until the end, and then not round until I get my final answer. So these are all not to scale or not proportional, but then on the answer sheet, I sort of, I drew them proportionally. So they're not to scale either, so they could all fit, but this is proportionally what those scales look like. So this is a three and 12 slope, and this is how gradual a one eighth inch and 12 inch slope looks like.